Next, Jeffrey Brown's Now Read This Book Club conversation with our March author. It's part of our regular series on the arts and culture canvas. Around the world, women have developed a special superpower, the ability to generate electric shocks and hurt men. Our March book club pick, The Power, is dark, funny, and unsettling, imagining a future in which the gender balance and world order are upset, but not quite as you might think. Author Naomi Alderman joins me now to answer some of the questions our readers sent in, and thank you for being part of this. Well, it's great to be here. So tell us a little bit about what you are after, superpowers, everything flips, right? What if women and not men were the sex who could do more physical harm, mm -hmm. who could cause more pain? Do we think that in those circumstances, women would remain peaceful and loving and kind and lovely, or do we not? And uh -huh. let's have a think about how those situations would play out. And I really went into the book thinking, I want to know too. I want to know what would happen in these circumstances. And then just following the logic of the characters and the plot through to work out what I thought the answer was. OK, so then you created this world. Our readers have read. And let's go to some of their questions, OK? Great. Why did you decide to write the novel entirely in the present tense? The book would only work if it seemed like it was right now. <laughs> so people say to me, when is it set? And I say, day after tomorrow, basically. It's going on. You know, I, I started out thinking, oh, maybe I'll set it in the 70s. But actually, no, you mm -hmm. need to be able to go. Would my life be different today yeah. if this happened today? Yeah. And that, you know, that remains a very pointed question. And in the book, the things sort of evolve. You give us a kind of countdown and then count up. <laughs> so we're sort of in, in, in time. I do. Something is going to happen yeah. at the end of the book, yeah. but you're not going to find out what it is for a while. OK, <laughs> let's go to the second question. What influence did Margaret Atwood or The Handmaid's Tale have as you wrote this book? So you can see people thinking about the famous example, The Handmaid's Tale. What are you writing and what was her influence? I say I'm writing science fiction. I come, as far as I'm concerned, in a grand tradition of feminist science fiction, which also includes Octavia Butler and Ursula Le Guin and Marge mm -hmm. Piercy. And these are books that I loved reading when I was a young woman. And they seemed exciting to me. They were envisaging alien worlds where there were five different genders or a future where there was no such thing as gender. Mm -hmm. and, and this seemed, you know, in a way, feminism is a science fictional enterprise. Yeah. Um, so and Margaret I, Atwood herself, you were telling me before we started, became a kind of mentor. So I was very fortunate. I was paired up with Margaret Atwood in a mentoring program. Mm -hmm. Sometimes these things take and sometimes they don't, but we became good friends. Yeah. And we talked a lot about the ideas in the book. There isn't a single point where I would go, oh, yes, that's what Margaret told me. But, <laughs> but we had a, a long conversation over a couple yeah. of years about what we thought might happen and where the pressure points might be in that sort of world. Yeah. Were you inspired to write The Power by events in your own life? If you were, did you find the writing process to be a sort of catharsis? Oh, I'll bet you hear that a lot, right? <laughs> it's like, I mean, all writers hear that. But, yeah. yeah, I mean, I, there was never a point at which I actually electrocuted somebody at will. <laughs> but I think like a lot of women, I have experienced, you know, catcalling or whatever the reverse is yeah. of catcalling, where people say horrible things to you. And, you know, I think probably every woman, this is what the Me Too movement was all about, is that everyone's experienced something. And I think for me, in a funny way, the more significant thing was that I had experienced the world of stories as a woman, where women are quite passive and men get to be active. And I wanted to write something where that would turn over and see what happened. And, yeah. and in that sense, it wasn't a really like, oh, I long to be able to electrocute a man. <laughs> 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 and I should say, women in the novel can also electrocute women, so yes. they can electrocute anybody. I really wanted to write a story where women, in a very natural way, would be able to get those tremendous fight scenes. From that perspective, I think it was very enjoyable to write. OK, we had a, a, a number of readers send in a version of the same question. We paired a, a couple of them together that I want to address. Reversing the situation in favor of women solved the problem? Is it? not just an act of revenge and can we not look beyond how do you see your book as a catalyst for female advancement vis-a-vis -vis the violence you project through women in power this requires us telling the people who haven't read it that things do not end up really rosy once well, women have this power my view is women are not any better than men not any worse either 
Yeah. I think men and women morally tend to be about the same. For me, female advancement comes from recognizing equality. That is all I'm talking about, mm -hmm. is to say, let's not treat women as if they are some special category of like morally good human who have to be kind of tended to and cherished and looked after because they can't really look after themselves. And you know, the hard jobs of the world really have to go to the men because the women are so tender. I stand for the irreducible complexity of the human spirit where each of us contains vulnerability and toughness. Each of us contains love for children and the desire to do violence or to be selfish. All of these things exist in all of us. And if we insist that only one gender gets one of those, we are cutting off one of our limbs. So let's finish there for now. We're going to continue our conversation, and all of it will be online on our Now Read This Facebook page. And for now, let me say thank you, Naomi Alderman, for joining us. Well, thank you so much for having me. And before we go right now, our pick for April. We're back in the real world, I, I think, but there's still plenty of gender politics. Brotopia is an expose of one of the dark sides of Silicon Valley's tech industry. It's by journalist Emily Chang. We hope you will read along, check out our Facebook page for insights from our authors and other readers, and do join our book club, Now Read This, a partnership with The New York Times.